Hi guys, you are not going to believe it, but it is a spectacularly gorgeous day. Here in the end times in paradise over to the trickle of Buckeye Creek above Bridgeport, California, here on this gorgeous summer weekend, this chilly summer weekend where the hordes of clueless morons are pouring into paradise here on Saturday morning, August 27th, 2016. I'm hiding from the clueless fucking morons in my gas-sucking truck doing what I do every Saturday morning is bringing you my clueless moron roundup rant where I go on the pages of the mainstream media to bring you more evidence that this planet's collective IQ is heading directly into the toilet. Good God, guys, I've got 18 stories. So let me dive right into it. And we're going to start right here with your tax dollars at work. As we see this headline from International Business Times, U.S. Air Force plans to plasma bomb skies using tiny satellites to improve radio reception. There you go. I know I'm sick and tired of not getting good radio reception. So I think the best answer is to hire the U.S. Air Force to bomb the ionosphere with plasma bombs. The U.S. Air Force is considering, is considering to improve radio communication by directly seeding the ionosphere with plasma. The upper atmosphere will have plasma bombs detonated in it using a fleet of micro satellites. The project is expected to improve radio communication. There you go. There's a there's a highest and best use of our tax dollars. But of course, you know when they're up there with their goddamn uh, plasma bombs and their micro satellites, they might be running into or will be, shall I say, in a few years, running in to chemtrails. And this is the mainstream media's light, latest version to get us used to the idea of chemtrails to save us from global warming. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. And this is one man's plan to stop global warming by shooting particles into the atmosphere. Can science succeed where politics has failed? So this article is looking in at this fucking whack job who I need to do a full rant about, this guy named David Keith. David Keith, a Harvard professor of applied physics who and public policy who has arguably done the most work of, of any person on this planet exploring the promise of the promise of a geoengineering method known as solar radiation management, otherwise known as chemtrails. Uh, they're so this is trying to mimic volcanoes by blasting massive amounts of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere where they will be colliding with plasma bombs. There you go. As Keith and others believe humans can mimic volcanoes by launching planes or balloons into the stratosphere to spray similar sorts of particles. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. I suggest they uh, Google cane toads. 
Okay, speaking of aircraft, oh God, I absolutely love this one. This article out of Newsweek. Watch as the world's largest aircraft crash lands. I saw this article a couple weeks ago about them flying this giant thing that looks like a blimp praying. I had visions of the Hindenburg and uh, my dreams came true as I see the world's largest aircraft has crash landed on its second test flight causing damage to the cockpit. Unfortunately, no one was killed. This is the 302 foot long Airlander 10 came into difficulty Wednesday after reportedly hitting a telephone pole and crashing into the field. According to a spokesperson for hybrid air vehicles, the aircraft's developer and the crew is safe and well. Quote, quoting the spokesperson, quote, the flight went really well. The only issue was when it landed. And from the Hindenburg to the hopefully, if ever I have prayed for, for <laughs> an eco-Nazi vision, you can imagine, uh, from the Hindenburg to the Titanic, please, uh, dear Mother Earth, uh, where have we, where have we heard this story before about 102 years ago? Giant cruise ship heads to Arctic on pioneering journey as these, 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 thousand clueless morons heading into an iceberg-filled sea. I've already mentioned this story in two other rants. Thanks to climate change, a luxury cruise ship has undertaken a pioneering journey that will see it sail through the once impassable Northwest Passage during a month-long trip that is drawing much excitement, but also criticism from environmentalists. So this boat is up there right now with nearly 1,000 passengers and almost 700 uh, crew. Passengers on board the $350 million vessel paid between $22,000 and $120,000 for tickets, which took three years of planning and preparation to avoid any mishaps, such as a repeat of the Thai Titanic, and this is uh, how Slate Magazine, Will Oramus writing in Slate Magazine about this cruise ship, it is an abomination, a massive diesel burning, waste dumping, ice destroying, golf ball smacking middle finger to what? remains of our planet. So while I'm waiting for my dreams to come true and have those clueless morons get sent to the bottom of the Arctic Ocean after hitting an iceberg broken off from the Greenland ice sheet, I can take a little bit of consolation in this hilarious story. Cruise Line CEO details Alaska bear mauling of two workers. A bear that mauled two cruise ship wilderness guides during a hiking excursion in Alaska attacked so quickly that there was little time to defend against the animal, the CEO of the cruise ship company Wilderness Explorer said, and uh, so one of these guys 
while he was squirting the bear with bear spray, the, the bear was reaching down and chewing on his leg. Unbelievably, authorities have no plans to hunt down the bear. They say bears are common in the area near a stream filled with salmon at this time of year. Other words, these fucking cruise ship morons uh, deserve what they get. From cruise ship morons to American driver morons, traffic fatalities on the rise as Americans drive more miles and text behind the wheel. For the second year in a row, the number of people killed in traffic fatalities increased substantially from January through June. Uh, over 19,000 people uh, killed in crashes on U.S. roads during the first six months of this year, a 9% increase over last year, and an 18% increase over 2014. This is due to a combination of factors, including a stronger economy and lower gas prices, which cause people to drive more miles. No shit. There is also an alarming number of teenage drivers who use social media behind the wheel. In a survey of more than 1,000 newly licensed drivers between the ages of 15 and 17, 35% admitted they would use social media when behind the wheel. Additionally, 21% admitted they would video chat and drive at the same time, and roughly 43% said they are willing to text and drive. Okay, but... Driving while texting is not the only way to get you killed. Several versions of this story. Death drivers shooting death by trooper under investigation. In North Carolina, where state troopers are trained in dealing with the hearing impaired, investigators are still trying to unravel how a traffic stopped turned fatal for a deaf driver. Uh, the family of Daniel Kevin Harris, who is white, by the way, just in case you're wondering, said he was unarmed and suggested the sequence of events was a tragic misunderstanding, the type the state's training manual warns troopers to avoid. To avoid. Authorities have not said why Ch Trooper Jermaine Saunders fired and killed uh, Harris after he refused to stop for some minor traffic violation, uh, which they do not say what the violation got that got this deaf guy shot to death. Okay, I found this next story about clueless moron drivers while searching in vain for climate change headlines for my Wednesday rant. There were no climate change headlines in the main headlines, but this headline remained for two days. The 2017 Ford Super Duty is a stump-ripping monster. Yes. Um, I know what you're thinking. What is there to know about big-ass pickup trucks that has been known for eons? Yes, they're big. And yes, they can carry and pull a lot of stuff. D-D-D... 
So anyway, this goes on and on. Of course, nowhere does it mention the gas mileage of this truck. I like getting down to the bottom uh, of this long, involved news story. A lavishly appointed Ford F-450 can cost upwards of $85,000, although it can tow a small town. At the end of the day, none of that matters, though. Middle-class Americans have always been able to find a way to buy things they can't really afford, such as $500,000 homes, horses, $50,000 or $85,000 in this case, pickup trucks, boats, RVs, and on and on. It is the American way. Yes, it is. Okay, what's going on in the world of GMOs? Oxitec CEO. This is the worst case scenario for unleashing genetically modified mosquitoes into the wild. Uh, Alex Jones has been ranting about this story for years, talking about uh, genetically modifying millions of mosquitoes and turning them loose in Florida. So, what could possibly go wrong with unleashing a whole bunch of genetically engineered mosquitoes on a population? The worst case scenario, according to Octatech CEO Hayden Perry, it doesn't work. There you go. Uh, let's see the bottom of this story. So, you can rest easy knowing that an out-of-control mutant mosquito population was not in the running for worst-case scenario. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Okay, from GM Mosquitoes. Good Lord, guys, I'm not even halfway through. I, I just need, you know, a lot of these stories, the headline just says it all. Don't count on technology to save you in a disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, two stories about Pokemon Go. Well, there's a hundred stories. These are the two making this uh, Saturday's rant. This one from Time Magazine. Pokemon Go may have just shown us what the end of the world looks like. And unfortunately, I can't show you the video, but it's all over YouTube. Just go YouTube search Pokemon Go Stampede. Time Magazine. A surreal video uh, that purports to show thousands of Pokemon Go players in Taiwan stampeding after a Snorlax. A Snorlax could be indicative of just all-consuming the planet, uh, all-consuming the smartphone game has become. Uh, this is from Taipei, Taiwan. In the video, we see a mob pushing through an intersection with the urgency and intensity of one usually expects of marathons or attempts to escape alien invasions or terrorist attacks. There was a Snorlax waiting for them, it is alleged, so they took off in mass. I would love to compare this video of these clueless fucking morons to uh, the King Kong uh, movies from the 30s. And as long as we're over there in Asia, 
looking at Pokemon Go from Taiwan to Japan. Japanese truck driver playing Pokemon Go kills pedestrian. A Japanese truck driver playing Pokemon Go while, dr while driving his truck hit two women, killing one and injuring the other in Japan's first death related to the Nintendo company craze. Uh, a spokesman for Nintendo offered condolences to the family of the dead woman. Uh, good Lord, I'm already up to... Uh, again, I think the uh, headlines pretty much says it all. A suspicious number of iPhones are breaking right before an iPhone launch. This is, a, I'm not sure what, uh, what some of this uh, first paragraph means. Planned obsolescence is one of those quasi-conspiracy theories that, was bullshit. that sits right alongside the breakfast industrial complex as making you a weird dinner party guest. But it is true that modern electronics have a shelf life, and a bunch of one-year-old iPhones spontaneously dying right before the launch of the iPhone 7 is particularly bad timing. Many versions of this story... Uh, a boy with pacemaker denied alternate security screening. This is what the TSA, this is another example of your tax dollars at work. Uh, this is nine-year-old, they just identify him as Chile. They don't give his last name. Uh, nine-year-old Chile... Uh, always goes through alternate screenings at the airport because a pacemaker implanted in his heart doesn't allow for him to go through metal detectors. However, last week in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, Chile was refused screening because TSA told the pair, quote, some terrorist plots use children with pacemakers. Um, uh, instead of the, quote, typical smiles in use of the other machine or swiping his hands for explosives, Chile was surrounded by no less than 18 TSA agents and police officers, taking more than one hour to uh, get through the TSA, this nine-year-old terrorist with a heart condition. Okay, good for Hawaii. Hawaii wants people to stop swimming with dolphins so they can get some peace and quiet. So we see chronic disturbance to the resting dolphins can negatively affect their health and fitness. Clueless fucking moron tourist may soon be barred from swimming with Hawaii's emblematic dolphins if the federal government gets its way. As the feds are getting, hopefully going to pass this law which would prohibit swimming with dolphins within two nautical miles of the state, effectively ending the popular animal encounters. The reason the nocturnal dolphins are trying to sleep 
from Clueless Moron swimming with dolphins, with sleeping dolphins, to Clueless Morons licking bats. As we see, bat lickers lick bats in a bat cave and get caught. On March 16, 2015, two hikers named Cody Foster and Dusty Ray Gill licked a tricolor bat in violation of federal law. <clears throat> the bat was hibernating in this cave in West Virginia's Monongahela National Forest, remote enough that if the hikers had just kept their bat-licking escapade to themselves, no one might have ever discovered the crime. Unfortunately for the duo, they also spray-painted their names on the cave wall and uploaded their adventure and evidence of the crime to Facebook. A local caving group discovered the gra graffiti and forwarded the report along to the Forest Service, which sprung into action, investigating the names they discovered the duo's Facebook page and discovered photos of the licking, as well as the following exchange. Oh, the things you do to make me so proud. <clears throat> Touching a bat with your tongue. Lots, LOL, it was so worth it. From bat lickers, we got two more. Uh, from Norway, <clears throat> down in the dumps. Norway man stuck down toilet over lost cell phone. Firemen in Norway came to the rescue Friday of a man who climbed into an outdoor public toilet to receive to retrieve a friend's cell phone and got stuck in the tank. This is Kato Larson, age 20 was able to climb through the toilet seat to recover the phone lying at the bottom of the outhouse, but was unable to climb back out again. Quote, I was down there an hour. I was panicking. There were animals crawling on me. Overcome by nausea and vomiting, he tried in vain to pull himself out of the tank, which is only emptied one time a year. So he ended up calling the fire department on his own cell phone who used a chainsaw to cut him out of the privy. Uh, quoting the fireman, quote, it was pretty full down there. By the way, the cell phone was not recovered. And we're going to end up with this story about the ultimate way to make lemonade out of lemons, I guess. Several versions of this story. Zipline Company. Woman who fell to her death had unhooked her safety gear. A woman who fell 35 feet to her death from a zipline platform had disconnected herself from her safety system, the attractions operator said Thursday. Delaware State Police investigators are investigating how Tina Werner tumbled off the platform at the Go Ape treetop adventure attraction in Lums Pond State Park on Wednesday. Uh, Werner, 59, had completed the required safety training and was nearing the end of the course when she fell and died from multiple blunt force trauma 
by way of an accident. So this was her daughter, um, Melissa, eulogizing her mother on Facebook. Quote, she was finishing her bucket list. Finishing her bucket list. Close quote. Uh, the daughter said her mom was able to complete at, at least one zipline ride before falling to her death. So, she did do it, said Slater, who posted a tribute to her mom on Facebook. Good luck to clueless moron uh, Ms. Werner, Tina Werner, for finishing her bucket list by unhooking herself from her safety harness. Anyway, guys, I have got to wrap up this week's Clueless Moron Roundup rant and figure out where I'm going to hide for my last weekend in paradise because there is no way I can withstand the invasion of Clueless Morons for Labor Day weekend, so I need to get the hell out of here. Bye, guys.